Hey everyone, welcome back to Noiseberry Games. Today I want to take a quick look at the new PC version of Live Alive. This was released on Steam on April 27th, 2023. Its regular price is $66 Canadian, or your regional equivalent. And it's developed by Square Enix and Historia Inc. and published by Square Enix. And I just wanted to say thank you very much to Square Enix for sending me a review code for this on PC. So I have actually played this game before. I played it on Nintendo Switch when it came out last year, pretty sure it was, and it actually ended up on my games of the year list for last year because I totally fell in love with this game, and so when I heard it was coming to PC, I was really excited because I wanted to play it at a higher resolution to really appreciate the beautiful 2D HD art style and also a higher frame rate, so I was pretty interested in um, mostly a kind of a tech review of, of this game, of this version of it. So I haven't tried it out yet, but I want to have a quick look at the settings. Um, nothing different in the game settings here. Uh, graphic settings, borderless windowed, excellent. Frame rate, you know, 30, 60, 120. No 144, 144 would be okay, but 240 and unlimited, that's probably enough. Um, I've got my, my little overlay up right now. It says in the menu I'm sitting at 450 FPS, it's, it's pretty solid. <laughs> Some cool presets here, like you don't need too many graphic settings for this kind of game, but I was I was definitely interested in them. Um, you know, low quality, medium quality, high quality, maximum quality. That's pretty cool. I quite like that. Some nice color settings here. I don't believe the Switch version had those. That's, that's quite nice. Uh, but that's about it for graphic settings. Totally fine. Uh, language, you can still switch your voice between Japanese and English. Gamepad settings, this is really cool. Um, you, it looks like you can rebind your controls, which is great. Uh, but you can even change the icon settings. So automatic, I'm using an Xbox controller, so it shows those. You can change it to Type 1, which is Xbox, or Type 2, which will be PlayStation. You can see in the bottom left there. I think that's very, very cool. Lovely option to have. So if you don't know what Live Alive is, is it was a, uh, a JRPG that was only released in Japan for the Super Famicom or the SNES back in the early 90s, I believe. And it, it was it was only released in Japan, not released in English. You could play fan translations of it uh, eventually, but it got ported to, or got remade for the Nintendo Switch last year. And now it's got a PC release and I believe it's on PS5 as well, possibly not Xbox, I'm not totally sure. But basically it's it's kind of, it's, it's very similar to Octopath Traveler. Um, I actually prefer this game to Octopath Traveler. Um, obviously Octopath Traveler is very inspired by this game. Um, but in this game, as you can see on the screen here, you pick seven different chapters, which has seven different characters, all set in different eras, and you can play all of them in any order that you want. And you just experience these really cool, uh, quite quite small stories that, that vary in in all sorts of genres. So for example, the prehistory era, you play as this caveman fella. It, it's basically just a traditional JRPG, but quite a small scale because it's just one chapter of this game. The present day one, it's uh, kind of like a strategic fighting game. Basically, you, you choose uh, which uh, opponents you want to fight, in which order, and depending on how you do in each, each fight, you unlock new abilities for your character. The Distant Future is very, very story-driven. There's very little combat in that one. Twilight of Edo Japan was a huge inspiration for Undertale because in this chapter you can uh, choose to play as a, a pacifist or choose to play as a, a, a brutal serial killer where you kill every single person in the entire chapter. And so when I was playing this on Nintendo Switch, I decided to not do either of those routes fully. I basically just kind of uh, blitzed through this chapter as quickly as I could. I didn't want to kill everyone. I didn't want to spare everyone because they just seemed quite finicky and the, the reward, which is just like some kind of in-game weapon, I think, just didn't seem really worth it to me. And so when I heard it was coming to Steam and, and PS5 to a lesser extent, I was very, very curious about, um, apart from the graphic settings and stuff, I was really interested in the achievements. Because I was thinking, you know, what if they, they do achievements for this chapter in specific? Uh, like if you have to kill 100% of people or spare all the people, you know, how many playthroughs are you going to have to do to get all achievements and stuff like that? Because 
Uh, if there had been achievements on the Switch version, I would have played this chapter differently. So I was really, really intrigued in the achievements. And I haven't actually looked at them yet. So that's going to be something fun for us to do together. So if I switch to desktop capture here, we can have a look at the achievements. There's 48 achievements, it looks like. One of them is just for unlocking all 47 achievements. Cool that it tracks them, I like that. Uh, if we go right down to the bottom, 21 are hidden. They're probably going to be story achievements and stuff, so we won't be able to see those too much. But it does look like there's a lot of uh, kind of fun bonus things in, in each chapter. So like this top one, craft 10 items in the prehistory chapter. That's cool, like theoretically, if you were playing this, the Switch version, you might have just made like 9 items and, and not done any more. Um, win the head counting game in the prehistory chapter. Don't super remember it. Play as Captain Square in the distant future chapter. I think that was um, kind of like a game, like a little arcade game on the spaceship. I don't believe I ever played it on the Switch version because I was just trying to get through the chapter kind of thing. So it does look like pretty much every achievement that's showing up here is kind of bonus stuff in the chapters. Um, like these two are about the prehistory chapter. Yeah, so you've got like the two bonus prehistory chapter ones, and then down here you've got the complete the prehistory chapter. Complete all the chapters and stuff like that here. So you've got bonus ones for each chapter. Okay, nothing in the uh, Twilight of Edo Japan yet. I don't know what this one means, the Mimic Mamet. Totally not, not sure about that one. Befriend the Prisoner. Sounds vaguely familiar about something you would do. They're, they're, they're ordered kind of weird. <laughs> you've got like all the complete ones, and then down here you've got something else. I think this is, um... These are story achievements that will happen in, in, in the chapter. So like you have to use your sense of smell in the prehistory chapter. You have to prepare coffee in a distant future chapter. So that's quite nice, honestly. So it looks like for each chapter you've got uh, complete it. You've got an easy gimme achievement that will happen as you play it. And you've got uh, one or two optional achievements for each chapter. So it doesn't actually look like there there's a achievement for... Uh, doing like pacifist or, or um, genocide in Twilight of Edo Japan. It might be one of the hidden ones, like 21 is a lot of hidden achievements. Uh, I'm gonna guess some of those are like story ones, but I don't know if you'd want to hide like a pacifist achievement as a hidden achievement. So I'm definitely gonna have to look up an achievement guide for this. Um, I won't do it in this video because if you haven't played the game, it really is a wonderful game to experience yourself and I think some achievements might spoil some parts of the game, so um, if you're interested in it, I would, I'm not going to look at them in this video because I would definitely re recommend checking them out yourself, checking the game out yourself. So I think just to, to finish this video off, just so we can actually see some of the graphics, uh, I think I'm just going to hop into the Twilight of Edo Japan chapter. Just just have a look at it. Let's, let's have a look. Will the shinobi carry out his task with a merciful heart, or will he put his every enemy to the sword? Like I said, you can do pacifist playthrough of this chapter, or you can do uh, a genocide playthrough of it. Let's play it. This isn't the one I would start with uh, normally. There's like a pretty decent uh, recommended uh, order to play them in, and, and the first one you, you're supposed to play is prehistoric, because it's one of the worst, <laughs> but also it is literally just a, a small-scale traditional JRPG. So it's a, it's a pretty solid one to play first to really get a feel for the game. So you can see the, the character models look pretty pixely and like the fire there looks pretty pixely, but the walls and the lighting especially, they, they look really, really nice. Oh, I, I honestly love this game so much. It's so good. So I, I've just skipped all the story stuff just so we can get into it and man, this looks so good. It looks so much better than the Switch version. I, I'm playing this 1440p. The, the lights, the lighting looks amazing, the castle walls here look amazing. Oh, it looks so good. How's my frame rate doing? Yeah, 280. I think, I think we're good. And the, the soundtrack, the soundtrack really is incredible. So yeah, there you go. We, you can see we can uh, try and sneak past them all, or we can attack them. I just got my first achievement. That's so exciting. There we go, we've gone invisible. He's never gonna know I'm here. I don't actually remember how you do this bit. Like how you get past these boyos. Ooh, you don't see me. 
<laughs> I guess you just wait for them to get out of the doorway and then go through. Or you can kill them, obviously. There we go. Now, now we're fighting him. <laughs> we're fighting both of them. So, if I was doing a pacifist playthrough, I would have ruined it already, unfortunately. <laughs> Look, they're weak to Firefly's wake. Let's do them. They're fireflied. Oh, man. The, the frame rate and the graphics look so good on this PC version. I'm so excited for it. Oh, this is great. Can I do a Shadow Slash? If I move here... Shadow Slash! I don't think that gets both. I think that just gets him. He's gonna die to fire, I think. Oh, no, I need to get him... I need to get him to move onto fire. Here, if I wait here, he might move on to... I pass? There we go. He walked onto the fire. Perfect. <laughs> Uh. So yeah, I, I guess if you want to know more about the game, I would recommend watching my um, Switch version. Because um, that one, or even like my Game of the Year video from last year. Because uh, the Switch, the, the video I did on the Switch version, I did when I was playing the third chapter that I'd played. And obviously the Game of the Year one, I'd finished the whole game, so I just talked about it a little bit. Or, I would just recommend picking it up for yourself, because it really, really is an excellent game, and I absolutely love this game. And I've been so excited for it to come to PC, just so I can... Look at these graphics, they look so good. I love this this art style. This was a little bit of a gushy video, I think, but I, I really am excited about this version, and, and just this game in general. It's, it's really, really great. So yeah, I'm definitely going to have to look into the, those hidden achievements um, on my own time just to, to have a look at them and, and see what they are, because 21 hidden achievements, that's pretty fun. Um, I think depending on what they are, I'll probably try and get all achievements in this game. Because it's, it's a really cool game and I like it. Thank you guys very much for watching, make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!